Hi, I'm Eddie Wong, the Executive Director of the Angel Island Immigration Station Foundation, and you're about to see clips from the celebration of the 100th anniversary of the U.S. Immigration Station at Angel Island. <clears throat> well, good morning, future citizens, friends, and uh, families of the future citizens. And our honored guests have all been so graciously introduced. My name is Larry Kreider, and I am appearing on behalf of the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, uh, which under the Department of Homeland Security has sole authority in San Francisco to administer the Oath of Allegiance. Please raise your right hand. You will take the oath together. Repeating after me, I will be giving the oath in small phrases. After the first I, I will give a pause and you may each say your own name. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty. Of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen that I will support and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by law, that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by law, that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by law, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Congratulations. Now you may please be seated. Just as a follow-up to that, just because this does happen also to be uh, January is Black History Month, and we have recently celebrated the birthday of Martin Luther King. So let me share with you one quote from Dr. King in a speech he was once making that I thought is particularly appropriate for today. And he was referring to all Americans, native-born, newly naturalized, second, third generation of whatever background. And he says, we may have all come on different ships, but now we are all in the same boat. So welcome to the boat. Today, just as you, uh, your communal and national ancestors, uh, you now embark on a unique adventure. Um, you embark on a new, unique adventure with other citizens naturalized and native-born. That is the adventure that at least in part brought you here, to join in this democracy, which gives you the greatest opportunity to exercise personal liberties and achieve individual opportunities. Together, as a community 
And as individuals, you have the tools to achieve your ambitions, to promote and realize equality, to fully participate in your government, and to exercise your rights and protect your liberties. It is not only in the courts that your voice will be heard, but in the other halls of government, local, state, and federal. And I would mention also, because it's apropos of this week, that um, uh, the president just nominated for the Northern California three Asian Americans uh, for the federal, uh, federal judgeships, one for the Court of Appeals and two for our court uh, here, the District Court in Northern California. It is this diverse society in our institutions and our great constitution that's the glue that holds all of us together. When we all stand up and say the Pledge of Allegiance or when we all stand up and sing the national anthem, that is just a part of it. But working together in communities, working together and having a voice in our government is really important. And so I urge you to fully participate in that effort. You join a society with a form of government that our founding fathers realized was a great experiment. But they also hoped it would be enduring and serve our new nation well. One philosopher attributed the success of this experiment to the American peoples, and now new citizens, that includes you, uh, the American people's spirit of cooperation and tolerance. With that spirit, you should go out and become active members of your community and your newly adopted country. And since I've been given the liberty of saying maybe a few extra words because it's a <laughs> it's the keynote, <laughs> I brought I brought along another poem, and um, that I I was amazed to find. And so when I used to, we used to do these ceremonies, the judges used to do these ceremonies years ago. Uh, I don't think we did them nearly as well as you've been doing them, but, uh, but we did them. And um, I enjoyed reading this poem, which I was amazed to find. For those of you from Germany or familiar with Bertolt Brecht, I had no idea he had written poetry. I was only familiar with his plays and so forth, but he, had, he did. And there's this wonderful poem that some of you who became citizens some time ago may recognize. For those of you who are new citizens, you'll be happy you didn't have to go through this procedure in an open court uh, where you were going to be asked questions about uh, uh, civics or um, the, the various questions you ask. They ask you with respect to your citizenship test. Um, at the time that he uh, observed this experience in Los Angeles, he, uh, the examinations were given in open court before a judge. Just think of that. I mean, so no matter what you may think about those people who conducted those examinations of you, it was in silent, quiet, you know, and outside the uh, eye of the public. But uh, this is what Bertolt Brecht's observation was of the proceedings. In Los Angeles, before the judge who examines people trying to become citizens of the United States, came an Italian restaurant keeper. After grave preparations, hindered though, by his ignorance of the new language. In the test, he replied to the question, what is the Eighth Amendment? Falteringly, 1492. Since the law demands that applicants know the language, he was refused. Returning after three months spent on further studies, yet hindered still by ignorance of the new language, he was confronted this time with the question, who was the victorious general in the Civil War? His answer was, 1492, <laughs> given amiably in a loud voice. Sent away again and returning a third time, he answered a third question. For how long a term are our presidents elected? Once more with 1492. Now the judge, who liked the man, realized that he could not learn the new language and asked him how he earned his living, was told by hard work. And so at his fourth appearance, the judge gave him the question, when was America discovered? <laughs> and on the strength of his correctly answering 1492, he was granted his citizenship.